Harry Potter and Sorcerer's Stone by H. J.K. Rowling, Chapter 6 The journey from Platform 9 and 3 quarters. Harry's last month at Dudley's wasn't fun. True, Dudley was now so scared of Harry. He wouldn't stay in the same room, while Aunt Petunia and Uncle Vernon wouldn't sh- didn't shut Harry in his cupboard, force him to do anything or shout at him. In fact, they didn't speak to him at all. Half terrified, half furious, they acted as though any chair with Harry in it were empty. Or, uh, although this was improving in many ways, it did have a bit of depress. It was it did become a bit depressing after a while. Harry kept in his room, his new alpha company. He had to decide to call. He had decided to call him a Hedwig, a name he found in her history of magic. His school books were very interesting. He lay in his bed reading late into the night. Hedwig. Swooping in and out of the window, open window, as she pleased. Lucky that Aunt Petunia didn't come into vacuum anymore, because Hedwig kept bringing back dead mice. Every night before he went to sleep, Harry ticked off another day on a piece of paper he had printed on the wall, counting down to September the 1st. On the last day of August, he thought he'd better speak to his aunt and uncle by getting to King Cross Station the next day. So he went down to the living room, where they were watching a quiz show on television. He cleared his throat to let them know he was there. Daddy's screen and ran from the room. Uh, Uncle Vernon? Uncle Vernon grunted to show he's listening. Uh, I need to get to be at King's Cross tomorrow to go to Hogwarts. Uncle Vernon grunted again. Would it be all right if I, if you give me a lift? Grunt. Harry supposed that meant yes. Thank you. He was about to go back upstairs when Uncle Vernon actually spoke. Funny way to get to Wizard School. A train, magic carpets, got all punches. Have they? Harry didn't say anything. Where is the school anyway? I don't know. So Harry, realising this is the first time. This is the first time. He pulled the ticket, Hagrid. Hagrid had given him out of his pocket. I just take the train for platform nine and three quarters at eleven o'clock. He said his aunt stared. Platform what? Nine and three quarters. Don't talk rubbish, said Uncle Vernon. There is no platform nine and three quarters. It's on the t- my ticket. Barking, said Uncle Vernon. Had he made a lot of them? You see, you just wait. All right, we'll take you to King's Cross. We're going up to London tomorrow anyway. I wouldn't bother. Why are you going to London, Harry asked, trying to keep things friendly. Take that to the hospital, growled Uncle Vernon. Got to get that ruddy tail removed. Where it goes to smell things. Harry woke. At five o'clock the next morning, and was too excited and nervous to go back to sleep. He got up and pulled on his jeans, or, or pulled on his jeans, because he didn't want to walk into the station with his wizard robes. Changed on the train. He checked his Hogwarts list yet again, made sure he had everything he needed. So that Hedwig was shut safely in a cage and paced the room, waiting for Dudley's to get up. Two hours later, his huge her junk had been loaded to Dudley's car. Our petunia had talked. <coughs> Dudley intended to sit in next to Harry, and he set off. They reached King's Cross at past half past ten. Uncle Vernon dumped Harry's trunk into a car and wheeled it to the station for him. Harry thought this was strangely kind until Uncle Vernon stopped dead. They saw platform with a nasty grin his face. Where are they, you old boy? Platform nine? Platform ten? Platform should be somewhere in the middle. They don't seem to have built it yet, do they? He was quite right, of course. There's a big plastic number nine over one platform, a big plastic number ten, with a ne- one next to it, in the middle, nothing at all. Have a good term, said Uncle Vernon, with an even nasty smile. He left without another word. Harry turned and saw the first Dudley's. Drove away, all three of them were laughing. Harry's mouth was wet rather dry. What on earth is he going to do? He was good at starting to attract a lot of funny looks because of it. He had to ask someone. He stuck the guard in guard. He didn't, he didn't dare mention nine and three quarters. The guard had never heard of Hogwarts. When Harry couldn't even tell him what part of the country it was in, he started to get annoyed. Though Harry was being stupid on purpose. Getting desperate, Harry asked for the train. Left at eleven o'clock. The guard said there wasn't one. In the end, had the guard straight away, arriving about time wasters. Harry's now trying hard not to panic. Couldn't the large clock of the arrivals board? Yet ten minutes had left to get to the train. 
potholes. He had over there, how to do it. He was standing in the middle of the station with a trunk, cardiff lift, on the lift, drug it full of his widow money, a large owl. Haggard? Haggard? Must have forgotten to tell him something. You tell him something you had to do. Like tapping the throat brick on the left to get into Dun Ding Jun Valley. I wonder if he should get his wand and start tapping the but to get inspectors stand between platforms nine and ten. And a man at that moment a group of people play paths just behind him, caught a few words of what they were saying, packed with muggles, of course. Harry swung round. The speaker was a plump woman who was talking to four boys, all flaming red hair. Each of them was pushing a trunk like Harry's in front of them. Him. They had an owl, heart hammering. Harry pushed his cot after them. They stopped and so did he. Just near enough to hear what they were saying. Now, that's the platform. What's the platform number? said the boy's mother. Nine three quarters, piped a small girl. Also red-headed, who was holding her hand. Mum, can't I go? You're not old enough, Jenny. Now be quiet. All right, Percy, you go first. What well, looked like the oldest boy marched towards platform nine and ten. I watched carefully not to blink in case he missed it. Just as the boy reached the dividing barrier between the two belt forms, a large crowd of this came swarming in front of him. By the time he left, the last black pot had cleared away, the boy had vanished. Fred or Nix, the plump woman said. I'm not Fred, I'm George, said the boy. Why is it, woman? You can call yourself a mother, your mother. Can't you tell I'm George? Sorry, George, dear. I'm only joking with Fred, said the boy. Off he went. The twin called after him to hurry up. He must have done so, because a second later, he'd gone. But how had he done it? Now the third brother was walking briskly behind the barrier. He was almost there. And suddenly, quite suddenly, he wasn't anywhere. There was nothing else for it. Excuse me, Harry said to the plump woman. Hello, dear, she said. First time at Hogwarts. One's new too. She pointed to the last and the younger of her sons, his tall, thin and gangling freckles, his big hands and feet. Big hands and feet and long nose. Yes, he said. Yes, said Harry. Thing is, the thing is, I don't know how to, how to get onto the platform. She said kindly. Harry nodded. Not to worry, she said. All you have to do is walk straight at the barrier between platforms. Nine and ten. Don't stop. Don't be scared. Crash into it. And, very, and that's a very important. Best to do it a bit of run, if you're nervous. <coughs> Go on there before run. Okay, said Harry. Okay, said Harry. Pussy trolley ram. Dead at the barrier. He looked so solid. He walked towards it. People just at him, in on their way to platforms nine and ten. Harry walked very more quickly. He was going to smash right into that barrier. Then he'd be trouble. Leaning forward on his cart, he broke into a heavy run. The barrier was getting near, coming nearer and nearer. He wouldn't be able to stop. The cart was going to control. He fought away. He closed his eyes, ready for the crash. He didn't come. He kept running running. He opened his eyes. A scarlet steam engine was waiting next to the platform pack of people. Sign overhead said the Hogwarts Express, 11 o'clock. Harry looked behind him and saw a walked by an archway where the barrier bin. The word platform nine, three quarters on it. He had done it. Smoke from the engine drifted over the heads of the clattering, chattering crowd. While the cats of every colour wound here and there between their legs, owls hooted to one another. It just grunted his sort of way, the babble and the scraping of heavy trunks. First few carriages were already packed with students, some hanging in the window to talk to their families, some fighting over seats. Harry pushed his cart off down the platform in search of an empty seat. Passed it around for his boy who was saying, Gran, I've lost my toad again. Oh, Neville, he heard the old woman sigh. Boy with red rocks was summoned by a small crowd. Give us a look, Lee. Go on. Boy lifted a lid of a box of his arms. In his arms, people around him shrieked and yelled at something. So I poked out a long, hairy leg. Harry pressed on for the crowd. You found an empty compartment at the end of the train. You put Hedwig inside first, and then started to shove it and heave his trunk to 
towards the train door. He tried to lift it up the steps. Carly raised one end. Twice he dropped it painfully on his foot. What a hand! Well, the red-headed twins. You followed Fred and Marion. Yes, please, Harry panted. Oh, Fred, here. Come here and help. The twins helped. Harry Trump was at last tucked away in the corner of the compartment. Thanks, said Harry, pushing his sweaty hair out of his hair, eyes. What's that? said one of the twins, suddenly pointing at Harry's slightly scare. God, blimey, said one. Are you? He is, said the first twin. Aren't you? He said, Harry. What? said Harry. Harry Potter, chorus the twins. Oh, him, said Harry. I am. Yes, I am. Do the boys called him. Harry felt himself turning red. Then to his relief, a voice floating in through the train came floating through the train's open door. Fred? George? Were you there? Come, okay, Mum. We look last look at Harry. Twins hopped off the train. Harry sat down next to the window where, half ridden in, he would walk, could watch the hair fairly family platform and hear what he's saying. The mother had just, had just taken out her handkerchief. Ron, you got you got something on your nose. A young boy tried to jerk out the way, but she grabbed him and began rubbing the end of his nose. Mum, get off! You wiggled free. Oh, is Icky Ronnie got something in his, on his nose? Said one of the twins. Shut up, said Ron. Where's Percy? said his mother, their mother. Come in now. The old boy came straight into the sight. He had already changed his bellowing black Hogwarts robes. And Harry noticed a shining red and gold badge on his chest with a letter P on it. Can't stay long, mother. He said, I'm up front with the prefix. We've got two companions themselves. Oh, you're perfect, Percy, said one of the twins. They're a great surprise. She have said something. We had an idea, no idea. Hang on. I think I remember him saying something about it, said the other twin. Once, twice a minute. Well, some old shut up, said Percy. Percy's prefect. How come Percy gets new rooms anyway, said one of the twins. Because they're prefects, said the mother proudly. All right, dear. Well, have a good term. So meow, when you get there. She kissed Percy and Chick, then he left. Then she turned to the twins. Now you do. This year, pay yourself. If I get one more out, tell him you blown up a toilet or well not a toilet. We never blown up a toilet. Great idea though, thanks, Mum. Not funny. And look after it wrong. <laughs> Don't worry, if you make Rodkins, it's safe with us. Shout out to Ron again. He's almost as tall as the twins already. Nose is still pink. His mum had rubbed it. Hey mum, guess what? Guess who's we met just met on the train. I had him back quickly, so they couldn't see him looking. You know that black-haired boy who was near us in the station? No, he is. Who? Harry Potter. Well, Harry heard the little girl's voice. Oh, Mum, can I go to the train and see him? Mum, oh, please. We've already seen him, Jimmy. A black boy isn't something you go go in. As in a zoo, you, is it? Really, Fred? How do you know? Asked him. So his scar. Oh, he's really there, like lightning. Poor dear. No one who's alone. I wondered. He was never so polite when he asked how to get to the platform. Never mind that. Do you think he remembers what you know who looks like? The mother said he'd become very stern. I bid you to ask him, Fred. No, don't you dare. As though he needs reminding of that of his first day at school. All right, keep the hair on. We're still standing. Hurry up, their mother said. Three boys clambered onto the train. They leaned out the window to hear her kiss and goodbye. The younger sister began to cry. Don't, Jenny. We we'll send you loads of owls. We we'll send you a Hogwarts toilet seat. George, only joking, Mum. Train began to move. Harry saw the boys waving, mother waving, their sister half laughing, half crying, running to keep up the train until it revered to its speed and she fell back and waved. Harry watched the girl and her mother disappear. Train ran into the corner. Houses flashed past the window. Harry felt a great leap of excitement. He didn't know what he's what he's going to do going going to go going to where what he's going to. They had to be better than he was leaving behind. The compartment slid open. The youngest red head boy came in. Everyone sitting here? he asked, pointing at the seat opposite Harry. Everyone else everywhere yeah, else is full. Harry shook his head and the boy sat down. He glanced at Harry, he looked quickly out the window, pretending he didn't look. And look, Harry saw, and still had a black mark on his nose. Hey, Ron, twins were back. 
Listen, we're going down the middle of the train. Lee Jordan's got a great dry tarantula right down there. Right, grumbled Ron. Harry, said the other twin, do we introduce ourselves? Fred and George with Leesley. This is Ron, our brother. See you later then. Why, said Harry and Ron. Twin said, come up, the door shut behind them. Are you really a hand part of Ron? Blurted out, Harry nodded. Oh well, I thought it might be the Fred and George's jokes, said Ron. Really, they have, you have really got, you know, put in Harry's forehead. Harry pulled back his bangs to show his lightning scare. The girl was scared. So, what's you know who? So, that's that's where you know who? Yes, sir, Harry, but I can't remember it. Nothing, said Ron eagerly. Well, I just remember a lot of green light, but nothing else. Well, said Ron. He sat and stared at Harry for a few moments. And as though he suddenly realised what he was doing, he looked quickly out the window again. Oh, you were family wizards? asked Harry. We found Ron just as interesting as Ron himself. Found him? Ah, yes, I think so, said Ron. I think Mum got a second cousin who's an accountant. We never talk about him. So, you must know lots about magic already. The Weasleys were clearly one of the old wizarding families of pale boy in Deadly Valley, the alley, talked about. I heard you want to live with Mongols. Went to live with Mongols, said Ron. What are they like? Horrible. Well, not all of them. My aunt and uncle and cousin of Fo Wish I had three wizard brothers. Five, said Ron. For some reason, you look he's looking gloomy. I'm a six of an old family. To go to Hogwarts, you could say. Got a lot to live up to. Bill and Charlie who only left. Bill was head boy and Charlie was King Captain Goodrich. Now Percy's a perfect Fred. And George mess around a lot. They still got really good marks and everything thinks they're really funny. Everyone expects me to be as well as the uh, others, do as well as the others, but if I do, it's no big deal, because it, they did it first. You never get anything, I never get anything new either, with five brothers, got Rail's old robes, Charlie's old wand, and Percy's old rat. Mum reached into his pocket, put out a fat grey rat, who's asleep, his name's Scabbers, he's useless, he really never wakes up. Percy's got Al, my dad, being a perfect prefect. But I ain't half mean. I've got scabbers instead. Ron's eyes went pink. He seemed to think he said too much. Because he went back to staring out the window. Harry didn't think there was anything wrong not being a full day owl. After all, he never had any money in his life until a month ago. He told Ron also all about having to wear Dudley's old clothes and never getting proper birthday presents. He seemed to cheer Ron up. Joe Hagrid's told me. I didn't know anything about being a wizard, about my parents of Voldemort. Ron Grass, what, said Harry? You said you know you know whose name, said Ron, sounding like both shocked and impressed. I've, I've, I've thought you of all people. I'm not trying to blame, be brave or anything, same name, said Harry. I just never knew you shouldn't. See what I mean? I've got loads to learn, I bet. He had a voicing for the first time. So he had been worrying him a lot lately. I bet I'm the worst in the class. You won't be. There's lots of people come from muggle families. They learn quickly, you know, quick enough. While they've been talking, the train had carried them out of London. Now they're speeding past fields full of cows and sheep, quiet for a time, watching the fields and lanes flick past. Um, around half past twelve, there's a great clattering outside the corridor. A smiling, dimpled woman slid back the door, the door and said, Everything. Everything off the carts, dears. Harry, who didn't have any breakfast at his feet, but Aaron's ears went pink again. He muttered that he thought he bought sandwiches. He went over to the corridor. He never had any money for candy for the Dudleys. Now he had pockets rattling with gold and silver. He had to buy as many Mars bars as he could carry. One didn't have any Mars bars. What she did it was birdie dots, and very, very favourite beans, Dudley's best blowing. Gum, chocolate frogs, pumpkin pasties, golden, golden cakes, liquid wands, and a number of other things Harry had never seen in his life. Well, what did he miss anything? He got some of everything and paid a woman eleven silver snickles and seven bronze canuts. Ron stared at Harry, brought it all back, part and tipped it into an empty seat. How were you? Stop it, Harry. Taking the birds, bite a pumpkin, pumpkin pasty. 
I went in, taken out a large piece of package, and went, wrapped it. Four sandwiches inside, pulled out one of them parts, said, You always forget, so I don't like corned beef. So what were you, one of these, said Harry, holding up passing, Come on. You don't want this? It's all dry, said Harry. Ron, he hasn't, he hasn't got much time, he added quickly. You know, for five of us. Go on, have a pass, he said Harry. Never had anything to share before. Indeed, they want to share it with. It's a nice feeling sitting there with Ron, eating it their, their way. For all Harry's passes, cakes and candles. Candies and the foundries that they forgot. What are these? Ron asked. Harry asked Ron, hiding pack up chocolate frogs. They're not really frogs, are they? He started to feel that nothing would surprise him. No, said Ron. Yeah, but see the card is. I'm missing a green ripper. What? Of course you wouldn't know. Chuck the thoughts of cars inside them. You know, to collect. These witches and wizards. I got one about 500. I got a gripper on Parliament. Harry met the Christmas chocolate frog. Picked out the card. It showed a man's face. He wore half bloom glasses. A long, crooked nose and silver hair, flowing silver hair. Starts underneath a picture with the name Abacus Dumbermore. So this is Dumbermore, said Harry. Don't tell me you never heard of Dumbermore, said Ron. Can I have a frog? Oh, I won't get a gripper, thanks. Harry turned over to his card and read, Abacus Dumbermore, currently made master of Hogwarts, considered by many the greatest wizard of modern times. Dumbermore is particularly famous to defeat the Dark Wizard, Grimmauld, in 1945, discovery of 12 uses of dragon's blood, working in alchemy with his partner Nicholas Vermeil, Professor Dumbermore, Joyce classical dream of music and Tempin Bowling. Harry turned the card back over, saw it his judgment, and Dumbermore's face had disappeared. He's gone. We don't expect him to hang around all day, Devon. Be back. No, I've got men going her again. I've got about six of her. Do you want it? You can start collecting. Iron's eyes strayed at on a pile of chocolate frogs, waiting to be a rat. Have you said, said Harry? But in, but in, you know, the muggle world, people just say, put in, put in photos. Do they? What? You don't move at all? Well, it's said to me, weird. Harry stood up to them all, stepped back in the picture with the card, and gave him a small smile. Well, I was more interested in eating frogs, looking at famous witches and wizards cards. Harry didn't keep his eyes off them. Soon, he not only... Dumbermore, Mulgana, Bankis, Mulcutt, Alcarata, Gunnington, Sibir, Pilatus, and Merlin. He even finally tore his eyes apart. Way for Judas Kedoda, who was scratching her nose to open a bag of birdie pots, very flavour beans. You want to be careful of those, Harry, Ronald well, old Harry. When they say every flavour, they mean every flavour. You know, you get ordinary ones like chocolate and pyramid. Prevent the mem- marmalade. But you can get spinach and liver tripe. George reckons he had a burger flavoured one once. Ron picked a great green bean, let it get a caffeine, bit in the corner, blah, see sprouts. Had a good time eating the very every flavoured beans. Oh, he got toast coconut, baked bean, strawberry, curry, grass, cafe. Sardine was even brave enough to nibble the end off. Funny great one. Ron wouldn't touch, which turned out to be Pepper. Quench now flying past the window, going wilder, and near fields, neat fields are gone. Now there were woods, twisting rivers, and dark green hills. With a knock at the door, in the compartment, a round faced boy, Harry, passed the platform, nine and three quarters came in, looked tearful, sorry, he said. Have you seen a toad at all? They shook their heads, he wailed, I lost him. He keeps getting away from me. They turn up to Harry. Yes, said the boy miserably. Well, if you see him, he left. Do you know, do you, don't you know, don't you know why he's so bothered, Harry? Ron, if I thought that a toad I had lost it as quick as I could. If I brought a toad, I'd lose it as quick as I could. Mind your book scampers, so I can't talk. Rack was still snoozing on Ron's lap. He might have died. You wouldn't know the difference, said Ron in disgust. Tried to go out and turn him yellow yesterday to make him more interesting, but it didn't work. Look, I'll show you, look. He rummaged around his trunk, pulled out a very battered looking wand. He had chipped in places and something white was glinting at the end, unicorn's hair, really poking out anywhere. He was just raised his wand when the compartment door slid open again. He told his boy he was back, but this time he was a girl with him. She was already wearing her new Hogwarts robes. Have you seen 
A toad and her dwarves lost one, she said. She had a bossy sort of voice. Bits of brush, brushy brown hair, rather large front teeth. What have you found? told him. We have seen it, said Ron. But the girl wasn't listening. He was looking at the one in his hand. What are you doing, Magic? Let's see it then. She had sat down, Ron looked, taken aback. All oh, right, clear his throat. Sunshine daisies, bottle yellow. Turn his stupid fat rat yellow. As he waved his wand, but nothing happened. Grandpa stayed grey, fast asleep. You sure that's a real spell, said the girl. Well, it's not very good, is it? I tried a few simple spells just for practice. It all worked for me. None of my family's magic at all. It was, it was, it was, it was never, ever, ever such a surprise. I got a letter. I was ever so pleased, of course. I mean, the very best school for witchcraft there is, I heard. Learn all your course books by heart, of course. I just hope it'd be enough. I have a he- Hemogene Granger, by the way, who are you? She said all oh, this very fast. But Harry looked at Ron, and she was really, it was really to see his dumb face. He didn't learn, hadn't learned the course of books by heart either. I'm Ron Weasley, Ron muttered. Harry Potter, said Harry. She looked, are you really? said Halloween. I know all about you, of course. I've got a few extra books of background reading. You're in the modern medical history and rise and fall of dark arts and great withering events of the 12th century. Am I? How are you feeling, Days? Goodness, don't you know? I found out everything I could if it was me, said Harry. Do you know that house you'll be in? Been asking around. I hope I get, I'm a giver for. Sounds far the best. He had done myself, is it? Was in it? But I suppose Ravencrawl. Wouldn't be too bad. Anyway, better go and look for Neville's toad. She had better change. No, the spectre would be there soon. She left, taking the good toad of boys with her. To, to, taking the toad of boy with her. Well, that house I'm in, hope she's not in it. She said, well, he threw his way in the back and trunk. She was still, Jules gave it to me, but you knew it's dud. What house was your brother's in? said asked Harry. Gimblethorpe. Said Ron, Loom seemed to be sitting on, on him again. I haven't been in it. Two, I don't know what they say if I'm not. I don't suppose Ravenclaw will be too bad, but imagine if they put me stuff of in. What's the house you you I mean, you know who, who, who was in? Yeah, said Ron. Flopped back in his seat, looking depressed. You know, I think he ends, I think the ends of Scabber's, Scabber's whiskers are too lighter. Hey, said Harry, trying to make Harry's mind. Take mine. Where's well, mine off the houses? So what do you, what your oldest brothers do when they, when they left anyway? Harry's wondering what the wizard did once he finished school. Charlie's a Romanian studying dragons. Bird in Africa doing something for Gingotts, said Ron. You hear about Gingotts being all over the pub, prophet? Don't suppose you get that. Get that with the Mongols. Someone tried to rob a high security vault. Harry Styles is dead. Really, what happened to them? Nothing. That's why, why it's such big news. Have been caught. My dad says been a very powerful dark wizard to get round gimbals. But they said they didn't think they took anything. But that's odd. Because for anyone who's scared, when you, something like this happens, you know who's behind it. Harry turns the news over in his mind. He's starting to get a, starting to get a prickle. Fear every time you know who we mentioned this, but I suppose it's all part of entering the medical world. We've been a lot more comfortable saying bold about without no worrying. What's your Quidditch team? He asked. She asked. Huh? I don't know any. Harry confessed. What? Ron looked dumbfounded. Dumbfounded. Oh, you wait. It's the best game in the world. He was off explaining all about four balls and positions of seven players. Going to famous games, he had been. Two of his brothers and broomstick he'd like to get if he had the money. He's just taking Harry for the final points of the game and the compartment door to open again. It wasn't Neville. It was the Dodo's boy, Harine. Granger this time. Three boys entered and Harry recognised the middle one at once. Fair boy from Madame Milgren's road school. Looking at Harry with a lot more interest, he showed back at Dodo's Milgren to Ali. Is it true, he said, they're saying all down the train at Harry Potter's in his compartment. So is you... It, it is you, is it? Yes, said Harry. Looking at the other boys, both of them, thick set, looking me extremely mean, and he even said, pale boy. He looked like Buddy goes, Ah, this is Grab, and this is Goyle, said Boy Boy, carelessly. 
noticing that when Harry was, where Harry was looking. My name is Merloff, Draco Merloff. Ran Matt gave a slight cough, which might have been hiding a stinker. Draco, Magov looked at him. Think my name's funny, do you? No need to ask who you are. My father told me all about the Weasleys. Red hairs, freckles, and more children. And then they can afford to about Harry. You soon find out some Weasley families are much better than the others. Potter, you don't have to, you don't want to be going making friends of the wrong sort. I didn't help you there. He held out a hand to shake Harry's, but Harry didn't take it. I think I could tell. I think I could tell you he was the wrong sort. Oh, myself, I think. Thanks, he said coolly. Draco Malfoy didn't go red, but pink tinge appeared in his cheek, little cheeks. I'll be careful by you, Potter, he said slowly. And this a bit of polite, this a bit politer. You do the same way, go the same, go the same way as your parents. Don't know what's good for you, them either. You hang around with friends like Weasley's and Hagrid. Hagrid, you'll rub off on you. Both of our Harry and Ron stood up. Say again, Ron said, with his face red as his hair. Are you going to fight us, are you? Malfrey sniggered. And they should get out now, said Harry, who was more bravely than he felt, because Grab and Grohl were a lot bigger than him and Ron. Don't we? But we don't feel like leaving, do we, boys? We know our food, and they seem to have... They seem to have some. Goyle reached for the wall to talk to Frog next to Ron. Ron leaped forward, but before he had much touched Goyle, Goyle let out a horrible yell. Scabbers, a rat was hanging off, off his fingers, sharp with little teeth. Something deep in the girl's knuckle. Grabber and Malfoy backed away. The girl swung. Grabber's round and round, howling. The scabbers finally flew off. Hit the window. All three of them disappeared at once. Perhaps they thought there were much more. There were more rats lurking around among the sweets. Or perhaps they heard footsteps. Because a second later, Halloween Her- Granger had come in. What is a what has been going on? She said, looking at the sweets all over the floor while well, picking up Scabbers by his tail. I think we've been he's been knocked out, Ron said Harry. Look closer at Scabbers. No. Don't believe it, he's gone back to sleep. And so he had. You met Malfoy before? Harry explained about their meeting in Dunglan Alley. I heard all of his family said but I heard of his family, said Ron Dartley. And some of the first to come back to our side after you know who disappeared. So they've been bewitched. My dad didn't believe it. He said Murphy's father didn't need an excuse to go over the dark side. He turned home, home with me. Can we help you with something? You better hurry up. Put your robes on. I've just been up to the front of the article conductor. He says we need you there. You haven't been fighting, have you? You'll be in trouble before we get there. Scabbard's been fighting, not us. The one's scaling her. Would you mind making it while we change? All right. I only came here. In here, because people outside are behaving very childishly, racing up and down the corridors, said Homie. Sniffy voice. And what dirt did you know, by the way? Did you know? Well, I'm glad I heard as, uh, as she left. Harry peered out the window. It was getting dark. He could see mountains, forests under a deep purple sky. sky. Train did seem to be slowing down. He and Ron took off their jackets, pulled on their long robes. Ron was a bit short for him. You could see sneakers underneath them. Voice echoed through the train. We will be reaching Hogwarts in five minutes' time. Please leave your luggage on the train. And be taken to the school separately. Harry's stomach lurched with nerves. And Ron, he saw, looked pale under his freckles. They cramped their pockets for the last of the sweets and joined the crowd fogging in the corridor. Train slowed right down and finally stopped. People pushed their way towards the door out of the tiny dark platform. Harry shivered in the cold air, night air. The lamp came bobbing over their heads and the students, and Harry heard a familiar voice. Oh, she is. Oh, she is. Come here, all right. There, Harry. Harry's big, hairy face beamed over the sea of bit heads. Come and follow me. And he follows some more first years. Why do you sit now, first years? Follow me. Snapping and stumbling, they followed Hagrid down what seemed to be a steep, narrow path. Then dark, so dark, on either side of them. Harry thought there must be thick trees there. Nobody spoke much. Never the boy kept losing his toes, sniffed once or twice. You get you for a sight of Hogwarts a second. Harry called over his shoulder. Just round this bend here. There's a loud ooh. The narrow path opened suddenly to the edge of a black, giant black lake. Perched up atop the high mountain, on the other side, its windows sparkling. 
sky, in a starry sky, vast castle with many turrets and towers. No more for a boat, Hagrid called, played in the fleet of little boats sitting in the boat. But sure, a wary Ron followed into the boat by Neville and Hermione. Everyone in, said Hagrid, and the boat put himself right then forward. Then a fleet of little boats moved off all at once, lying across the river lake. It was as smooth as glass. Everyone was solid, staring at the great castle overhead. And it towered over them as they sailed nearer and nearer to the cliff on which it stood. Heads down, said, uh, yelled Hagrid, as the first boats reached the cliff. They all bent their heads, and little boats carried them through a curtain of ivy that had hid a wide, wide opening in the cliff race. They had carried along a dark tunnel, seen to be taking them right underneath the castle till they reached a kind of undergrowth, har- underground harbour, where they clambered out onto rocks and pebbles. Oi, you are here. You are here. This is your toad, said Hagrid, who took in the boats as a boy climbed out of them. Trevor cried Neville, Blissy, holding out his hands. They clambered up a passageway in, into the rock where after Hagrid's lamp, croning out a last to the smooth, damp grass, right as shadow of the grass. They walked up the flight of stone steps, crammed with a huge oak front door. Anyone here? You here? Still got your toad? Harry Grid raised a giant fist and knocked three times on the castle door.